So, how's your soul? Have you taken a moment to just do a little test to see how I'm feeling? Do I really have exuberant joy on a regular basis, even as you perhaps watch the world go down in flames? Am I settled? Do I have peace? Am I a happy person? If not, perhaps this is the time to do a little soul care. Have you contemplated the cost of your cell phone? Well, the internet's quite a challenge, and uh, our generation is the generation trying to figure out how to use this thing well. It's going to exist for the foreseeable future, but as a new technology, we're the ones who are thrust into trying to figure out what it is, what it can do well, what it can't do well, and how to use it in virtuous ways instead of sinful ways. I would like to ask you, is it possible that it is robbing you of joy? That it is causing you to feel everybody's carking cares and you are having to pay a pretty heavy price in the emotional department. You and I are not built to receive all of the information that you and I get through our daily dose of browsing through our feeds, checking out all the news sites, getting texts from everybody. Hey, did you see this story? Is it possible that you and I are experiencing something we were not intended to experience? Could it be that God didn't wire us to carry every event taking place in every part of the world? at every moment, as if it were ours? Have you taken the time to consider what is the cost of the progress that we know as the cell phone? And is it possible without even knowing it, like a frog in the boiling water, we don't realize, yikes, this progress is robbing me of joy? An article from Stand to Reason, very helpful, asking this question, Could it be that technology has produced a full omniscience, an omnipresence that is hurting you and not helping you? Because of our cell phones or our laptops or your desktop, you and I get thrown into a full omniscient, omnipresent world, a world you and I were never intended to to inhabit. Up until the last fraction of human existence, we've only had to carry events that directly affect us and our families and local communities. Remember the days of local news only? You knew what was happening in your zip code, and that was pretty much it. And that perhaps was enough. Why? Because you and I are not omniscient. We were never intended to be omnipresent, and yet our technological devices throw us into a world you and I were never intended to inhabit. Constant carnage is funneled through our eyes and embedded into our souls. Bad news, terror, murder, violence, economies crashing. Bang, bang, bang. You are barraged with bad news as if you can do something about it and as if you can handle it. And the Bible tells us we can't. Why? We're not built to be omniscient. In a matter of minutes, we've watched multiple evil events. It is absolutely overwhelming. Yep, you take it. You get it. The feed, it keeps feeding. And the bad news, it keeps coming. And imperceptibly, perhaps, it is robbing you of joy. God, who is omnipresent, can handle all that evil pain and tragedy. He's capable. He has the bandwidth to not become overwhelmed. We don't have that capacity. The immutable, sovereign, loving, faithful, gracious, omnipotent Lord of heaven, whose word cannot return void, always achieves his purposes. His plans are invincible. He speaks and it will happen. And we would be wise to just take a moment, saint, and consider, yikes, Have I been taking on the cares of the world? And is it possible there's a connection to the omniscience that I'm being forced to consume, which I don't have the bandwidth to handle? Because we see things in high definition, 
We think we understand the entire story based on a snippet of information. We are not omniscient. Nevertheless, you and I enter the fray, don't we? After all, I saw the videotape. It was really clear. Somebody even held their phone the right way. I know everything there is to know. And enter the fray. We are quick to jump in. Perhaps the territory we just don't belong. Many servants of God are made to feel their weakness in another way. By an oppressive sense of responsibility. Do not take an exaggerated view of what the Lord expects of you. Spurgeon, writing to pastors, be careful, there's a ditch. This was long before technology gave us the world at our thumb tips. This was an era that we would consider so pedestrian. And yet Charles Spurgeon to his pastoral students says, careful, you are not intended to carry everyone's cares and concerns. One more quote, he will not blame you for not doing that which is beyond your mental power or physical strength. We are not the father, nor the savior, nor the comforter of the church. Charles Spurgeon's conclusion, his warning, his admonition to his students, you can't know and do everything. God and God alone is omnipresent and God and God alone is omniscient. He can handle it. He can see all the evil. He can hear all of the breaking news alerts which he knew about before eternity passed and he can handle it. What does it mean that God is infinite in knowledge, in wisdom? It means no matter how much we know, We know nothing compared to what God knows. We're not built to carry the weight of the universe on our shoulders. That is God's job. And I would simply like to suggest to you that you take a moment to examine how you are doing emotionally because God does not want us to be frazzled for your consideration. Some thoughts to help you diagnose the problem. Consider your soul. That's right conservative, Bible-thumping Christian, would you just take a moment to think about how you're doing? How do you do that? Well, think back a little bit. Do you still look at the world in a way that brings a little bit of delight or joy, a little bit of marveling at God's creation? Uh, How do you feel compared to a decade ago? Consider your soul. A number to who? Consider your soul's diet. We tend to take a little time to consider how many carbs am I consuming? How many steps did I get in? All well and good. But what does Paul say? Physical exercise, it's good, but it has a very little benefit. What's more important? Your soul. If you know about every breaking news alert that is happening on cable TV and you don't know anything new from the Bible, uh uh-oh, Your diet is imbalanced. Number three, consider how much good, lovely, and worthy of praise you feed your soul. Aren't we supposed to be dwelling on these things? Ask yourself the question, what's contained in your feed? Is it good? Is it lovely? Is it worthy of praise? That is supposed to be our spiritual diet. No, we don't become cloistered and naive, unaware of what's going on in the evil schemes of men. But that shouldn't be our constant diet. Jesus said all those things the Gentiles seek after. He was talking about clothing. He was talking about food. But you know what? Basically, these worldly things. He said to the Christians, seek first the kingdom of God. Number Four, consider taking a daily walk in nature. Oh, come on. We're not becoming liberal tree hugger grape nut eating people, are we? First of all, grape nuts are tasty if your teeth can take it. Watch out for the enamel chipping with the grape nuts. Nevertheless, it is good sometimes, maybe not every day. Take a walk in the woods. Number Five, consider what burdens you can and should bear. No, this is not to encourage you to become Doris Day. Hey, Sarah, whatever. No, we're commanded to bear our own burdens. 
but not the burdens of everybody on the planet. Cast your cares upon the Lord, for he cares for you. Take your burdens to the Lord. If you are carrying around a heavy weight, he wants to help you to lift it. But consider this admonition on a second level. If you think that the cares of the entire planet are yours, cast them on him. Lord, they're yours. I turn them over to you. Help me to know my place. Help me to focus on what is good, lovely, worthy of praise, and to not think for a second that I am you. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Thank you for calling technical support. This is Todd Friel, the wretch. The song refers to, could I possibly put you on hold for a moment? Todd, we have talked about this. You cannot answer the phone this way. right -o. Thank you for calling technical support. This is Todd Friel, the wretch. The song refers to... Friel!